In this second tutorial, we will be finding the equations of the vertical asymptotes, and we will be stating the intercepts, the domain, the range, and the end behavior. So if you'd please flip over to these three examples in our notes, we're talking about vertical asymptotes with these equations. These vertical asymptotes occur at x values that make the denominator equal to zero. So it's pretty simple to find a vertical asymptote. All you have to do is set the denominator of your rational function equal to zero and solve that equation. This equation is not very difficult. We would just subtract one and we'd get our vertical asymptote. I'm going to label that with a VA is the equation x equals negative one. Please make sure that you're using equations for your asymptotes and of course a vertical line starts with x equals. So we'll go over to x equals negative one and we'll dash that vertical asymptote. I'm going to also tell you what the horizontal asymptote is for each of these three examples. I'm going to explain why this is true in the next tutorial. So for right now, let's just write it down. The horizontal asymptote for this equation is y equals 2, and I'm going to dash that in. Again, I will explain why that is true in the next tutorial. Some of you might already know why it's true from Algebra 2. That's fine. Let's do our x-intercept, our x-int is what I'll label that as. X-intercepts are called the roots or the zeros of our function. And rational functions, fractions, are equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. So we set the numerator equal to zero to find the x-intercept and solve that equation. This is not a difficult one. We subtract one and we divide by two. So we'll have negative one half for our x-intercept. So we'll put a big dot right there on the x-axis. And finally, our y-intercept. Y-intercepts all have one thing in common, and that is that the x-coordinate is 0. So therefore, x is 0. So whenever you're looking for a y-intercept, just plug a 0 in for the x. Anywhere you see an x, plug a 0 in. So 2 times 0 becomes 0. And 0 is just 0. So basically, this stuff goes away. And the only thing that would remain is a 1 divided by a 1. So that's why our y-intercept is 1. And we'll go to the y-axis and plot that point. So I want you to be able to find all of those things for right now. I'm going to show you what the graph looks like, but the point of this lesson is not to graph yet. We will be graphing in our next lesson, but I just want to have the graph there as a visual for you. So I'm just going to show you that the graph looks like this. We'll talk about why the graph is doing this in a future tutorial. I want you to be able to find the information, the, the two asymptotes, the two intercepts. And now let's talk about domain and range. So domain, I'll just label it with a D. This is everything except for the 1x value that we could never plug in, which was that negative 1. So I'm going to choose my set notation, all x, such that x is not equal to negative 1. If you want to do interval notation, that's absolutely fine. Let's do our range. This range is pretty easy to do as well. This range is everything, every value except for this horizontal value, which was 2. So I'm going to say all y except y cannot equal 2. Let's also talk about our end behavior. And again, since both ends are doing the same exact thing, I'm going to describe my end behavior as one sentence, x approaching positive or negative infinity. And you can see that both ends, the far right end, is going to be trying to reach this horizontal asymptote. And the far left end is also trying to reach this horizontal asymptote. That's the value of 2. And that's what a of x will be trying to reach. a of x is trying to approach 2. Let's look at our second example, b of x. I'm going to go in the same order. First, I'm trying to find my vertical asymptote, so I set my denominator equal to 0. In this case, when I subtract 1, I will have x squared is equal to negative 1. Now, that's obviously very confusing because we cannot square a real number and get negative 1. So in this case, there are none. There are no vertical asymptotes because 
there's nothing that would make the, de, uh, the denominator equal to 0. Any number we plugged in for x, when we squared it, would either be 0 or positive. And then if we add 1, we'll definitely be positive. So there's no way to be equal to 0 here. So there's no restrictions for our x's. I'm going to tell you right now that the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And again, I'll explain that in the next tutorial. So we can dash that in. And that kind of now makes sense why there are no x-intercepts, because we just covered up the x-axis with our boundary line with one of our asymptotes. Let's do our x-intercept. Oh, I think I just kind of gave that away. Uh, x-intercepts is what I was just talking about. We set the numerator equal to 0. Now, obviously, 4 will never be equal to 0, so that doesn't make any sense. That's why we have no x-intercepts, and that's what I think I was just saying. We covered up the x-axis with a horizontal asymptote, so it makes sense that there are no x-intercepts. And our y-intercept... Let's see if we have one. I, I go and plug a 0 in for x, so 0 squared would go basically go away, and I'd have a 4 divided by a 1, so our y-intercept is 4. So that's good. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. That's really what I'm interested in right now, but like I said, I want to show you what the graph looks like. And this graph kind of looks like a mountain, I guess, a little hill. And that's what this graph looks like. Again, that's not so important right now. We'll look at that in a future tutorial. Um, but now that we have the graph, we can talk more about its domain and its range. This time, since there are no x-intercepts, there's, there's no restrictions to what uh, excuse me, not no x-intercepts, there's no vertical asymptotes, uh, there are no restrictions to what we can plug in for x. x can be anything. That means that x is the set of all real numbers. There are no restrictions. The range is a little bit different here. The range, we don't get any negative values. We don't get, in fact, we don't even touch the zero right here. So the lowest that we go in our range is zero, though we don't get to include it. So we have a parenthesis. And then we have every value in our range all the way up to four, but then we don't get any higher than four. We do get to include the four, though. So that's why this time I get to use a bracket. The end behavior. Since both ends, again, are doing the same exact thing, I'm going to write them as plus or minus infinity. x can approach either end, and b of x, in this case, is trying to get to the value of 0. You can see the far right end is trying to reach the value of 0. The far left end is trying to reach the value of 0. Finally, for c of x, we're still working on vertical asymptotes first. I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve that equation? Well, there's one number that can uh, make this thing equal to 0, and that's the value of 1. So the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. So I'll go over here and dot in my vertical asymptote. Like I've been doing, I'm going to tell you the horizontal asymptote, and I'm going to teach you that in a minute. y equals 0 again. We'll confirm that once I've taught you how to find the horizontal asymptote. Let's do x-intercept, though. x-intercept comes from the numerator. We set that equal to 0. And again, we get the same case as before. 2 can never be equal to 0, so therefore there is no x-intercept. And our y-intercept, we're going to plug a 0 in for the x. And in this case, that means that this thing becomes a 0, so it goes away. And now I have 2 divided by negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared, of course, is equal to positive 1. 2 divided by positive 1 is 2. So we go to the x-axis, excuse me, the y-axis, and plot a 2. That's what I want you to be able to find, but again, I'm going to show you what the graph looks like. This part of the curve looks like this, and this part of the curve actually does this. And we'll talk about that in a future tutorial, why it's doing that. Okay, let's do domain and range and end behavior for this one. Domain, in this case, is everything except for 1, so x cannot be equal to 1. The range is everything that's positive, basically. We can't be equal to 0. We never touch that. We're definitely not into any negatives over here, so we're going from 0 to infinity. 
I'll do a set note or an interval notation with that. And end behavior looks exactly like the one before it because it's doing the same thing on both ends. C of x is approaching the value of zero, the far right end and the far left end. Thanks for watching this. I want you to be able to find vertical asymptotes, x-intercepts, and y-intercepts from this tutorial. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>